Step into the incense and whiskey sanctuary with mindfulness enthusiasts and verified whiskey lovers, Mecca and Ashley, as they discuss all the random topics they love, from mindfulness to memes. This is Ashley. And this is Mecca. Hello, hello, hello. Today we have a guest on our podcast. We have Sade with Light Magic Tarot. We're going to be talking about, Ashley, do you know what we're talking about today? We're talking about black femininity. Exactly. Pop quiz. Okay, pop quiz. Kind of. It's not really. (laughs) I knew what the topic was. (laughs) But, you know, I know it means something different to everyone. Um, So... I want to kind of dive in to what that means for, for Sade and, and how that, and how that also resonates with like um, a thing and things that you can do to actually bring in more femininity um, and understand the power that you have as women when you embrace it. I love it. I love it. So I'm going to ask you Sade to introduce yourself and give us a little, give our uh, listeners a little bit of information about you. Awesome. Hello, everybody. I am Sade from Light Magic Tarot. I am an intuitive. I'm also um, a life coach and I help women to kind of like find their femininity. I help them find their glow. Um, I do consults in regards to love with a partner and consults in regards to self-love. So this is going to be a fun uh, episode. Yeah, Yeah. I love femininity <laughs> and it's what actually does, has been a journey for me. So I'm excited to talk about it. What does femininity mean to you, Charne? If you were to describe it or define it, what would you oh say? Oh my gosh, it's so big. So yeah. it reminds me of like when my girlfriend asked me, what is black girl magic, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> so it's so big. It's the way I swing my hips. It's the way I put my (laughs) my eyeshadow on. It's the way that I put my lip gloss on. It's the way that I give a nice little pause before we go into a restaurant to allow the male around me to be his masculine self, to open up the door. Mm -hmm. Um, It's so many things that it's heavy. And I know that it means different things for everybody else. But it's just basically allowing myself to receive from the universe like in the best way that's possible for me okay that's interesting you say the word receive I was reading um this article about how it was again everyone has their own different um definition of it but this one young lady described the essence of femininity of being receptive being receptive period um you know your body is receptive to you know a to a, a male or or sexual pieces and we're receptive in regard to like our intuition so i thought it was interesting that they use that as a as an example and then you just said it now too yeah, yeah. i mean honestly that's probably what the basis of it is about being able to receive but um as everything there are levels to this <laughs> so there are levels to being able to receive <laughs> Uh, you know what? I think also with the fact that there are level, I agree, there are levels to reception and being able to receive. But I also think that there is a certain amount of giving that women do or, fe- you know, women, uh, people of um, uh, with feminine characteristics do mm-hmm. that is not necessarily represented or possible maybe in the masculine. So if you think in like the traditional sense, um, the 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 giving of nurturance the giving of life you know the giving there's so there's so many things that in the traditional like masculine feminine dichotomy that um women give or the feminine you know people who identify as feminine give that maybe people who identify as masculine do not and so there's a balance i think to what um what is being received versus what's being given you know like 
I personally uh, grew up in um, kind of the South in this old school situation of uh, receiving doors opening, receiving certain, um, if you're walking across, oh, like, this is silly at the, some for some people, but walking down the street, I'm going to be on the side of the street that's not by the road. Like, my partner that's is going to but there are people <laughs> yeah, now, yeah. there are people today who are like, I don't need all of that, blah, blah, blah. But I was, I was on, raised to receive that. I okay. was raised to receive chivalry. Thank you. Becca, yeah, that's the word chivalry. I, I love yeah. chivalry. And honestly, you kind of take away from what the males like to do. So yeah. like um, in that giving and receiving component, um, ultimately males like to be able to shift our energy. They like to be able to shift our moods and they like to be able to give to us. Like you're basically removing your partner's ability to please you when you're like, no, I don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I need it. Cause yeah. it's good for me and it's good for you. Yeah. No, I recognize that. Or also mm -hmm. like, I recognize that you need to, that to need me to need this. <laughs> Yeah. It's okay. I will let this happen. Like I, you need me to miss you. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to let that happen for a minute. I miss you. <laughs> Not that you put a time constraint on it. Yeah. Let <laughs> me let it happen for a minute. Right. Happen. And so that like, even though those are like some like traits and examples of showing femininity. Right. And so it's not one of those things where like you are like, you know, some people may say, oh, you're turning back, you know, all the progression and independence mm. that we have had. That's not to say that you are not independent, that you are not like um, have the ability of taking care of yourself. I think that's kind of what I also wanted to like hone in on. Being mm -hmm. feminine doesn't mean like you're like a damsel in distress waiting right. on the thing. It's right. just the way you kind of carry yourself through all aspects of life. In all aspects mm -hmm. of situations, right? Um, and that, oh, can I chime in just a oh, little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's what I would call self mastery. So knowing when to give and when to receive, right? Mm -hmm. um, usually, when people are like, "Oh, you're just too independent, and you won't let anybody do anything for you," that means that they're on the opposite end of the continuum, and then the damsel, the damsel in distress, is on the uh, the other opposite other side of the spectrum. End. Mm -hmm. Right. So, okay. I mean, it's all about finding balance and that goes with just about anything in life. It's not mm -hmm. just like how you express your femininity, but you need to know like when to turn it on too, because ultimately um, being feminine or masculine is tied to like, it is tied to actions. Like mm -hmm. for instance, when I'm at work, yeah. I'm in my masculine body, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We got to get stuff done. I got to let people know that we got to see these patients and I got to do this and I got to do that. But um, I can also switch it off. So if there's a coworker around me and the coworker is like, oh, your hair looks nice today. Am I feminine enough to receive it? And just say, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Or am I like, girl, this whole thing or blah, blah, blah. Right. And a lot of us deflect. Being we able do to that. a compliment mm -hmm. and, very, and not putting a negative connotation behind it. Like, oh, this was done last week. Or are you like it? I, I think I want to get it cut. Like just mm -hmm. embracing whatever that compliment is. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, that's kind of where I start off with my clients. <laughs> like the ones that are like gun ho <laughs> in their masculine energy, like, I'm a hustler, I'm a boss bay. I mm. do this, I do that, I'm independent, I'm strong. Yes, I understand that. However, that's not um, something that can be carried on in the long-term uh, sense, okay? So it works in short spurts when it comes down to women in general. Mm. Um, so it, it's... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's really about finding balance. That's all. What? Okay. So say, for example, you know, when we look at, when we say the word masculine and feminine, when we're talking about just a woman, like what would be an example of um, masculine traits within a woman? Just what we were just talking about, that whole hustler mentality, hustle mentality. initiating, um, starting off your bit. I mean, it's honestly stuff that we actually need. I mean, we need it, but we just need to know when to pull it out. So 
being a self-starter, being a leader, um, initiating, taking charge, Those are, okay. um, organizing, that type of stuff. Okay. And then on the feminist side, that's like more na- nurturing, gentleness, like understanding. Mm-hmm. Um, and just being emotionally available. Emotionally available. Mm. Um, and okay helpful devoted so those kind of things it's like a, okay so now i'm like i think i'm repeating because it's like i see where the balance is right it's mm-hmm. a balance of having the two as opposed to one being stronger than the other exactly right. i'm also hearing yeah i'm also hearing that it's it's also maybe i'll call it situation specific for lack of a better phrase um and the ways that you express it and to what degree you express either femininity or masculinity i'm kind of picking up on that would you say that's a fair statement sharda in your opinion absolutely absolutely so you have to gauge it yeah can you tell us a little bit more about the work you do with your clients i think you just mentioned you know that that that's a starting point for your clients kind of reading where they are in terms of their feminine as compared to their masculine energy but what else, how else would you characterize the work that you do with your clients or say I was calling you today, you know, what would be our second session? What would that look like, for example? Okay, so <laughs> when you get accepted into the tribe, we Ooh, have homework. <laughs> exclusive. <laughs> okay. Okay, we have homework because, you know, like there are a lot of tarot card readers that are just out there and they want you to come back so you can get another reading no i want you to come back after you've grown i want you to come back after we've implemented some of the things that you need to do to heal um what do you see that's different what are you more aware of this is not something that i'm doing just so that like i can make a buck i i almost want to say like this would sound cocky but i'm not doing this for money I'm doing mm-hmm. this because it's a passion and I love it and it's amazing. Um, however, most of the time it's person specific. So based on what's going on in the cards, is it looking like your self-love um, meter is a little low? Okay, well, let's go ahead and make a list. Let's make a list of 10 things that you like to do and incorporate at least th- three of those things into your life within the next three weeks. So by the time I talk to you, Which ones stood out? Which ones shifted your energy? Which ones helped you feel better about yourself? Um, I'm heavy into like sending out sound therapy videos and things like that because for me, meditation is life. Meditation brings me right back to like ground zero. Uh, Meditation clears my mind. It clears my aura. So I do like recommend a lot of uh, meditation um, videos, things of that nature. Um, what else? But you know, I can't really say what does that look like because it's going to be specific so for every person. Sure. Like you would, a uh, uh, someone would come, they would kind of get a reading, and then there's based on what that person's need is. So if that ba- that person mm-hmm. um, low on self love, then you start off with a few things that they could do to kind of like boost their self love. Um, mm-hmm. I would assume like there's some chakra. Um, points that you may point out that need work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So everything is about expansion and growth. I mean, the only thing that I'm doing, I'm I'm a catalyst. I'm a catalyst to keep, uh, start the momentum up. And then I'm tossing you the baton so you can carry it on. Because I'm not meant to be a teacher in your life forever. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, I'm meant to help you get started, build up the momentum, and then figure out what your own practices are. You know? Hmm, okay. And would you call that like the glow up? Concept? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and they kind of, um, they kind of, they don't mirror each other. I can't say that, but a lot of the times it's kind of, it's all stemmed in love, right? So sometimes when people come to me and self-love isn't a factor in their life, or maybe it's a little low and you can tell based on how they're dealing with their partner, how they're allowing their partner to walk all over them or X, Y, Z, you know what I mean? Or it may be on the other side, if we're doing a glow up reading and something comes out and spirit is reading them for filth because they don't take care of their personal appearance. Mm. 
Mm. Or they're not valuing, you know, they're not valuing themselves in their relationship. So like I said, it all stems from love, but I feel like we all end up in the same place at the end. Mm-hmm. So like one more never, expansive sense. If, mm-hmm. if someone's never come to get a, a reading and they're like really looking to hone in on their femininity, because perhaps you know you're listening to this and you're like, well, how do I know if I'm more masculine or feminine or if I'm if I'm um if I'm balanced or not, right? Because that's kind of like a general question one one may ask themselves. How do I know which one I am? Right. Mm-hmm. And so we can just go over three different um we can go over three different scenarios and you tell me how you react and then we can go through it. Okay, so this aspect is XYZ, this aspect is this. But the whole thing when it comes down to consciousness and being aware, it's literally the trick is to be aware in the moment. Mm-hmm. Now the first step is finding out what those operating definitions are. And then the next step is like getting closer to like, oh shit, I realized that I didn't do X, Y, Z when I was talking to Brenda at work. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it's a journey. It's a journey. So some of the ways that, okay, so, you know, not to say that, you know, you know exactly who we're talking about, but just in general, if people, if women are looking to like embrace more feminine feminine energy into their own lives, like things that they can do just for themselves, things that they can do to kind of like really raise that consciousness in them. Mm. Oh, I have tips. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Share the tips. Become selfish. Okay. Become selfish. selfish. You cannot pour from an empty cup. Mm. meaning make sure that you are taken care of before you look around and see if everybody else needs to be taken care of if you need to take a day off because it's just not working it's one of those days don't go in because i have a report due or because you're afraid that it may throw others off take that day off for yourself be selfish take yourself out on a date that dress that you wanted to purchase for yourself, purchase it for yourself. Like <clears throat> the universe works on frequency. So if you're basically putting yourself last, all the people in your life are going to put you last. Mm. You te- you're teaching. I thought that in my spirit. <laughs> I thought that in my spirit. Hold on, I need a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she said, if you put yourself last, everybody in your life will put your put you last as well. Because that's what you're showing them. That's how yeah. you show, you're showing them that that is how you value yourself, and it's okay for them to value similarly. Exactly. I caught that one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And unfortunately, being in this wonderful uh, collective of a Black woman, you know, like, we definitely have that little thing where we put everybody first, and we're independent, and we're super strong, and we're leaders, and we don't want to wait on anybody to do anything. Mm -hmm. We don't want to wait on the man to, like come and take out the trash fine i'll do it myself no oh my god i just i was just talking to somebody about that see <laughs> i was like no i'll wait i don't like taking trash oh you you said you'll wait absolutely i, I definitely have said it times like you know i, I can I, and i'm not trying myself. to cut you off but i think the idea of when you ask when you're like you're like it's almost like, well, if I requested it, I must really need it because I rarely request a thing. So then yeah. if it's not done when we think it should be done, then it's like, oh, I'll do it myself. But like, what's the, like, what's the rush? Like, is it because they didn't jump when, when I asked or is it because it's bothering me so much that whatever it is. It's, <laughs> it's the first part. Mm. It's the first part because okay. like, we all are guilty of trying to show somebody how we want to be loved and how we want to be respected and how we want to be treated. Guess what? You actually are like hurting yourself when you have certain expectations in your mind with what you want this person to do. All you gotta do is rub that shoulder, baby, can you take this out? 
and make it seem like it's not a big deal, even if it is a big deal. And guess what? You can train yourself <laughs> to literally um, take less energy off of them not doing things when you want them to. And the funny thing about men, they really like when we don't put a lot of emphasis on certain things so that you can literally be like, oh, did you do that? Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, I'm going to have to try this because I don't believe you, but I'm going to try it. And it's right. it work. I don't yes, I don't know if that's right. going to work in this house, but I'm going to try, try it. I don't know if I believe you. <laughs> I will yes, report yes, back I'm to trying. the people. I yeah, will report, report back. back to the people. Because Wait, if I say it nonchalantly in this house, like, oh, you know, do you think you can take out the trash today? It's, it's uh, listen, it's that trash used to go out. I can smell it. That's when I know I'm going to get a reaction because I can say, did you take out the trash yet? About 14 times over the course of 13 days. <laughs> but I'm going to try it and I'm going to report back. I'm going to try different. Give it 30 I'm, days. And I'm take tap the into the femininity. Because sometimes um, our partners can pick up on our energy like, I know this motherfucker did not. Is that yeah. trash still sitting out? <laughs> now, even though, even though you didn't like, you know, babe, can you? They We're can still back up on trash, trash, but that's a metaphor for anything that, you know, that you're like. That you're requesting. Absolutely. Requesting, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so, okay, so some of the tips you said, becoming selfish, because you can't pour from an empty cup. Mm -hmm. um, what are some other tips that w can really help us, like, embrace after um taking that sense of urgency off of things mm. removing the sense of urgency like i want it done now well yeah that's sort of kind of like you're your masculine energy the only reason that you would even initiate or take action is because you want it done now ask mm -hmm. do you think you could xyz whatever the hell you want yeah. and just leaving it um <clears throat> and so like to me that kind of aligns with um, a manifesting principle that I use to bring certain manifestations in. So what I've noticed is when I have two things going, two things that I'm trying to bring towards me, once I put this into the ethers, once I say I want to manifest thing one, and then I switch over to another subject, it allows the first thing that I want to manifest to come in quicker. So to not because you're not doing it in urgency. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. okay. Um, the sentence that has resonated with me for such a long time is where there is no, where there is no expectation, there is no resistance, right? So that's not what it is. Where there is no intention, there is little resistance, right? Oh, so that makes sense. Wait, say that again. Where there is no intention, there is little resistance. There is a little resistance. So okay, so let me give you an example. Okay. okay. Yeah. And we all have been here. Okay. Think about that one guy that was literally like your side piece, the person that you used to call just because that's all you wanted, right? Your little dip off. And it ended up kind of like evolving into something more. Because there was no resistance there. You didn't have a specific oh, intention for that partner. I see what you mean. You know what oh. I mean? Like y'all weren't fighting because he was your yeah. little honey dip. Yeah. And you weren't looking at him like my expectation exactly. is here. You were you didn't have an expectation. You know, I was in one of those situations for a very long time. Mm. And I look back on that situation and I tell people regularly whenever I talk about this particular relationship that I don't remember us fighting one good time. And this went on for almost two years, wow. but that was because we were not quote unquote in an official relationship. And I had no expectations of him and he had no expectations of me knowing I was not seeing anyone else. He was not seeing anyone else, mm -hmm. but we were not fighting. There was nothing to fight about. There yeah. was nothing yeah. to fight there was about. No expectation. There was no resistance. There was you not. Didn't have but to. I, I also firmly believe in some instances, not all um, you fight about stuff when you care about stuff um so sometimes there's a there's a, a little bit of maybe some reworking and relearning i need to do in that mindset but i see what you're saying without intention uh or like you know there's being no, being open there's little resistance yeah 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 
I can see what you're saying too, but with a lot of these concepts, they are like literally specific, Mm -hmm. right? So they're situation specific. Yeah. Yeah. You will argue about something that you're passionate about. Yeah. That's just like human nature, right? Yeah. But when you go into these ships and I say ships, meaning like situation ships, friendships, ships of whatever, whatever, uh, situation ships for real whatever your situation is you know (laughs) whatever it is um there will be very little resistance when you don't have any expectations uh placed on this person Mm -hmm. right so you can use that to your benefit and basically try to generalize it over to certain areas in your life that makes sense why not? It worked in the other uh, area, right? That makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So these are good. So like becoming selfish, taking a sense of urgency out of the request. Also, um, you know, just not honing in on it on an expectation or intention um, of the thing, which will call which would cause little resistance. Okay. Mm-hmm. So don't do. Do you feel like that allows the universe to surprise you? Like yeah, I mean, you, you know, one of the things that you learn in, mani- you know, if you're actually manifesting is, you know, once you've made the request and you've, you've kind of, you know, done your petition or prayer over it, you leave it alone and let it do its work, right? And mm. so steady, like, you know, what'd you say? What's the answer? What da, da, da. Then we're disturbing it. So, yeah, I think that when you set it and forget it, then yeah. you... I.e. faith. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Faith that it's gonna come through. It makes me think of that phrase like don't pray and worry. Like don't oh, yeah. don't speak the manifestation and then like sit there and ruminate over it. You know, as you yeah. said, Mecca, like state it, make it plain and release it. So you know, allow the universe to do its work is how I'm interpreting yeah. the situation. Yeah. Absolutely. Are there any physical tips. Um like, is there, like, I could think of what one thing that when I think about femininity and I'm trying to get away from everything that we can do on the outside appearance, I think that part is kind of obvious. Like, yeah, you know, <laughs> maybe you want your hair done, put whatever it is that you do to make yourself feel good on the outside, but just like internally, I remember when I had to get my hair cut and it was a forced haircut. It wasn't like, I was like, Ooh, I'm about to get my hair cut. Y'all it was forced. Yeah. Part. And so, <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Um and so it was. For, you said force let me, let me force. just explain. No, I kind of want to like dig a little deeper. Wait, in let me just claim this. It was forced <laughs> upon me because I had like a an allergic reaction to mm-hmm. like a black hair dye, and so gotcha. it really, like brittled out and then like it broke my hair out to the point mm-hmm. that it was just like itchy, itchy, itchy. So I had to get it all cut out. So that's that's what I mean when I say it was forced upon me. Okay. <laughs> So let me you didn't plan for she it. She said that with such conviction. Yeah. So. <laughs> I just, I was like, oh my God, your hair was so cute. Yeah. Okay. But <laughs> oh, I shit. signed up for it. But I love it. Don't get me wrong. But I, like, you are not in your feminine energy. You ain't even trying to take that compliment. You I know, okay, right? Boy. Exactly. That she was, was not good, having it. That was a good example. It was not okay. <laughs> and I felt that though. And she, you know, you guys, I felt that. And I yeah. remember one of the things that I kept saying, like, I really have to like dive into filling all the fields, but still showing up for myself. So one thing I did, which is interesting, I started like, um, I used to like, I used to love to like take dance classes in college. So I decided to take, um, it's a girl local here in Chicago. I started taking some of her dance classes. It was like a four week, like dance boot camp to like, just really like show up for myself and just like, I don't know, start feeling myself again. Like, you know, hey, man. You know I like that. I like that. And it definitely helps. So I was going to say one thing that I would say is physically like moving your body, whatever that means for you. And not just exercise, really. Just like, Mm. you know, if you think about it, when you're learning about like, um, you know, hula hooping or belly dancing, Mm -hmm. those kind of like very sensual moves that really empower women, um, those can be, that's just my two cents. Oh, I concur. I agree with that. Because if you guys think about it, um, the symbol for femininity, it usually has curves in it, right? There are no 90 degree angles. And when we are dancing, we're moving our bodies, right? Mm -hmm. We're curving our bodies and things like that. Another thing that someone said to me recently, um, she was like, still waters, 
bore disease, right? Ooh. So wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. I'm sorry. <laughs> run it back. Run it wait, back. Wait, wait, wait. wait it because let me tell you something. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I just got this visual that came upon me. Okay, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna save my thought. Keep going. I'm, I'm oh, yeah. keep going. Mm-hmm. Steel water. That came through with way too much conviction, honey. Steel Come water on. Bo- bores disease. It's it can fester. It allows stuff to collect in. It's not moving mm-hmm. water. Like water is energy, right? Like and yeah, absolutely it has steel. Okay, but when we say steel water, you guys, we're not talking about like steel versus sparkling water. Like steel water meaning like water that's just left in the bathtub. Water Absolutely. is just like collected. Does that and not like rain? You know what I mean? Like I'm trying to mm-hmm. get the definition. Mm-hmm. Go ahead with it. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna connect it a little bit uh, further. So, if we accept the fact that we are all connected to the universe, the Earth is seventy percent water, thirty percent land, mm-hmm. and most humans are about sixty to seventy percent water. So if you are not moving, you are highly, or you live in a stagnant lifestyle, which most of us work stagnant jobs. We're sitting at the computer, like for umpteen hours, um, then that will bore some form of disease, right? So it is important to move your body. And the good thing about it is that you can do two things at once. You can move your body um, for exercise, but you can also move your body in order to release any negative energy patterns that may be. I see what's happening here. And it's, it's all about how you're moving your body and the Mm -hmm. kind of releases speaking in code here, body movement releases, let your imagination run. (laughs) Absolutely. I can't see these facial expressions, but that's what, wait, hold on. I missed it. Oh my gosh. What happened? (laughs) We're talking about moving your body uh-huh. in such such a way that you are releasing energy. Oh yes, <laughs> moving your body in a way that releases energy. And you know, for some women that don't ever that has never experienced uh, releasing their body like through an orgasm, because I think that's what we're talking about. Yes. Um, then <laughs> that is that is also, that can also cause you to like not have a proper balance of your femininity. That is no oh. science behind that, what I'm saying right now. There's no, I have not picked up a research book. That is just something I believe. I just want to just- Oh, say. I believe it too, honey. I think that we can all agree that that yeah. is likely the case. I thought we were talking about, I got my trampoline right here. No, ma'am, that's <laughs> not but what we were what? The trampoline is a good option too. Cause that's called rebound therapy. And I use that with my patients in oh. my job job Okay. <laughs> for, um, I say job job. What? I have two jobs. Okay. Yeah, for my other jobs. Job. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> by trade, I am, I'm an occupational therapist and I have older clients that have fractures and they can't move around as much. However, putting them on a trampoline it allows mm-hmm. their lymphatic system to be engaged. And that helps to like move out waste because the lymphatic system doesn't move unless your muscles are moving. So I did not know that. Yeah, it doesn't move. That's why people get sick when they're uh they're stuck in bed. They're bed. Yeah, when they're bedridden. Yeah. Heal yeah. water bores disease. Egg back, back to it. I'm going to have to come get on this trampoline then. I'm seeing. Yeah, come over. It's perfect. And I just found the perfect trampoline, like, music. Oh. What? Yeah. What's that? Let's, let's, let's explore that. <laughs> we're going to have to explore that in another episode. And then, like, exactly. she tried it. We're going to bring Sade back. We're going to talk about the trampoline. <laughs> okay. And I want to okay, know so, what the perfect trampoline music is, too. Because I, I, I get bored with workouts. That's why I like to try different workouts. I know we kind of get off subject, but I like to try different workouts. And music is very, very important to me when I'm working out. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I can leave a whole workout session if the music ain't right. Like, if I forget my headphones or my my yeah. pods, all those things. So, okay, but back to this. Becoming selfish or making yourself a priority, uh, taking uh, the sense of urgency out of your request, 
just let it happen mm-hmm. when it needs to happen. Uh, when there's no intention, there is a little resistance. Kind of mm-hmm. like that, set it and forget it. Have faith. Don't work. Don't pray and worry at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, physically, like moving your body, releasing can help. We're just talking about all kind of things that can really like help you develop and increase your feminine energy, right? Um, I, and I think that's really important. You know, do things that spark your creativity, like Absolutely. that put you in a place of power. Doing things that put you put you in a place of power um, can really like just raise your vibration. And when I say putting yourself thing, putting yourself in things that allow you to be powerful, I'm not saying you can't try anything new. You totally should be trying things new. But when we work on the things that we love and that we can uh, do effortlessly, that just kind of raises our vibration um, within our Absolutely. Okay, so I wanted to piggyback off of you because you were saying, what can you do besides like, glamming yourself up besides putting on makeup and getting your nails done blah 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 blah, that'll help um, with your femininity um I personally have two things that I love to do so I love to take a a bubble bath and that bubble Mm. bath has nothing to do with people on the outside of me but it has all to do with being able to cleanse my aura so I make sure that um, my bubble bath is like a me session. I have a personal date with myself every Friday. Um, it's usually by candlelight. There's usually a blunt sparked up on the side waiting on hey. me with a glass of wine. <laughs> I like this glass setup. Of wine. Don't forget the okay. wine. And my kiddo's gone. He's he's at the uh, the grandparents' house or something for the weekend. So, like that is my me time. And fifteen minutes, like okay, that's a minimum amount that you'd want to spend spend in the bathtub. But like all you need is fifteen minutes, girl. You hop out like hello, good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> all happy and shit. I love vibe. <laughs> What's the second one? <laughs> second one? Okay. <laughs> I kind of mentioned it. So, like, I do, I smoke weed. But with smoking weed, I like to put, like, crushed rose petals in it. Mm-hmm. So, like, um, rose petals are actually the flowers that hold the highest vibration. Mm-hmm. So, red rose petals typically um, bring in the energy of, like, um, passion, love, um openness um it helps open up your heart chakra and then pink rose petals they bring in affection and self-love and blah 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 so like I put a little bit of red and pink rose petals in in my blunt and that's I feel like I'm double dipping (laughs) that's I like it a lot oh okay so you use for your um what do people call it? You, I, people call it blunts, marijuana, plant medicine. Yeah. Flour, all the things. Yes. You're going to red rose. A little bit of flour and flour. And flour. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of flour and flour. So red rose petals in, initiates like love and passion. And then pink is affection and self-love. Yeah. And I actually have, I made a video about it on TikTok oh. too. So. Okay. Oh, like if out. they want to, they can head on over to my TikTok page because I have like a lot of little tidbits and ways that you can incorporate like love into your day. Love well, that. speaking Self-love. of which, where can the people find you? Let us know. <laughs> okay. I'm glad that you said something about it. <laughs> um, I am on Instagram. I am also on TikTok. And I do have a Facebook presence, but it's not as heavy as both of those platforms. But you can find me under Light Magic, but it's magic with a K. So it's M-A-G-I-C-K Tarot. Um, and I go live weekly on both platforms. And, you know, mainly we're talking about love. That's all we do. We're talking about love because it's the only uh-huh. thing that's uncontrollable, but everybody loves it. Everybody wants it. They mm. might deny it. Tax, <laughs> if tax. they can. No, but yeah. It's the highest vibration. It's the highest tax. vibration. So we we will e- include all of your um contact details within your um like within this piece. But I love this cuz it kind of like, you know, you one of the things that I noticed you offer is like, you know, 
the glow up i keep saying this glow up because it's one of those things that's kind of like you're talking to someone that can really kind of help you um identify strength and weaknesses identify anything within your chakras that should be clear to really kind of help you propel in life and mm-hmm. then the actionable items that that you can actually do um to to get you to where you you need to be i like that mm-hmm. yeah Love, we love, solving love. things over here okay yes i love it so yes. yeah all right so you know one of the things that you you guys have to tell us how you bring in feminine energy into your life there's so many different ways of doing it you know um there's and, and i've seen so much now of like people creating programs and books just based off of I just saw something about a femininity doctor or something like oh. there's so many people out here that are like, you know, I guess, I guess it's known that, you know, once a woman has both masculine and feminine uh, balance, then they can live their best life. I think you can live your best life anyway, but like that probably just really propels you into. And I, the other thing that's kind of tricky is the roles that you know all the titles and the roles that people are taking away and bringing bringing forth like various genders um and gender names so does that even count when we're talking about femininity and you know when we start using pronouns and does that count am i i I don't think so is this a different subject ashley No, I mean, I no, think it's, it's all not. related and we should explore it. So please, Charday, let us know your thoughts. I don't think pronouns make a difference in regards to they don't. Okay. you expressing feminine or masculine energy. Because it doesn't matter because males have a feminine and a masculine energy as well. Like we a- all absolutely. do, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. about what you're expressing when and to what degree, mm-hmm. regardless of pronouns, right? I think, yeah, yeah that makes sense to me. <clears throat> yeah. And like... If women were to really get a little deep <laughs> on it, <laughs> like you can kind of tell what what you're attracted to when it comes down to your partner, because like repels like, right? So if your partner is in a masculine space and you're like, I'm, I'm going back to the trash thing, you're like, could you take the trash out? <laughs> I'm really <laughs> like, y'all, that's the situation tonight. Like I was about to have to take the trash. I'm gonna try it tonight. Okay, right. <laughs> I'm gonna channel. I know my you feel like I'm calling you out. I'm I sorry. Feel this I'm like gonna... deep. No, I don't feel like you calling me out, but I feel like this is real relevant because I'm for real. As soon as we get down here, that's like one of the things that I gotta take care of. Yeah. So okay. just trying that out because, like, like I said, masculine meeting masculine, it repels. Right. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yeah. That's why you don't end up meeting your goal a lot of times when you are like going off on your man. Like, why did you not do X, Y, Z or, you know, whatever. whatever. Why didn't you shovel the snow? Yeah. Like, I can see that it would be like, okay, I'm, I'm turned off by that. And we're not yeah. making any progress. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Okay. So, and then women, like for me, a pet peeve for me, like if I'm dating a guy, like, you better not be in a mirror more than I am. I don't yeah. like that. Like, <laughs> I shouldn't have to be like, scoot over, man. <laughs> if you don't get your ass out that mirror. <laughs> she said what she said, y'all. She said what she said. <laughs> get out the mirror. <laughs> All right. Good. I think that we kind of left you guys with some really good, um, some actions and some tips on how you can increase your femininity. You can also reach out to Light Magic Tara to have a glow up consult, um, you know, and 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 just kind of dive into it with her reading like your chakras and your spirit and just kind of like giving you some really direct feedback and actionable items. Absolutely. And let them know if they come back and it's still the same bullshit on that uh, plate, I'm going to call you out on it, okay? Ooh. So if you haven't done any of the work, Oh, you get called out on it. Okay. You We're out. not coming here to play. I don't want to just steal your money. I want you to work. Okay. No yeah. Games. You know what? Doing the work. Everyone says doing the work. And sometimes that just means doing exactly what you need to do to get yourself to the next level. Exactly. That part. So thank you guys for listening. Um, until next time.
Thank you guys. Thanks for having me. I appreciate Thank you. it. Catch us next time on Incense and Whiskey. In the meantime, take a breath, have a sip. <laughs>